it is literally storming and the rain is coming down. It's cool, there's a chill. So what better time is there to do a fall TBR? I have to report that my tastes are changing and it's because I have been bored with reading lately. I typically read a lot of contemporary literary fiction. Um, however, a lot of the things that are published right now follow the same tropes and I just need a refresh. Um, I've been feeling very slumpy, so I've decided to challenge myself this fall by reading mostly classics. This might be a little overly ambitious, but I'm just going to go through them. If I get to them, I do. I just want to challenge myself a little more with reading. I've always been afraid of classics. I don't know why. I just am, especially when reading for pleasure. They're just something I don't typically gravitate towards, but there are a lot of like popular classics I have not read, which is wild. So. I want to start working on that this fall. The first one being, um, which totally does not even match that, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Sad to report, I've never read Pride and Prejudice. I actually just started reading it. I'm on chapter three. I'm getting the language. Um, I think watching Bridgerton <laughs> has helped me get used to the way that books like this are written in, but it's really good so far. We all know the premise, but if you don't, Basically, I think um, where I am in the book is that Mr. Darcy, yes, is going to come to town and Elizabeth, Lizzie, the youngest daughter, her parents, specifically her father, want her or think that she would be a good candidate. Mr. Darcy has recently come into a big fortune and the first most iconic line of this novel is it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife okay up next i want to read a book that i have been thinking about constantly um over the past few weeks i feel like it is a pivotal or important creationist or not creationist creation story that is frankenstein by mary shelley Another book that I'm sad to report I have not read but I know is obviously the basis for a lot of literature. I feel like there's a gap that I have because I haven't read and studied these books that if there is a reference, I mean I know like colloquially the premise of these stories but I just haven't like personally read them so I feel like I need to. Um, I really want to read Frankenstein. Like I said, I don't know, I'm just changing. I think I'm in the mood to like embrace a little bit of like, darker themes which I typically read but I read from like the perspective of a 20 something woman for the most part and like a contemporary society in today's society I want to see what was happening back then in the past so yeah I want to read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley I have been a little more adventurous I am a pretty big scaredy cat I get scared very easily um, but when I was invited to preview do a film screening of a haunting in venice by harper collins i was like i have to and then they actually sent me the novel to go along with it the movie was so good it comes out september 15th so definitely watch it and i'm excited to read this it is a murder mystery slash paranormal activity um, surrounding a mysterious death of a young girl Clearly I know how it ends based on the film, but I'm interested to see if the book and the film follow each other. We have a pretty renowned mystery solver. <laughs> we have a pretty renowned um, man who is great at solving mysteries, kind of like Sherlock Holmesy, and then um, a novelist who writes mysteries, and then a woman who claims that she can communicate with those who have passed away. So that's what this was about. The movie was so good. Um, I thought it was really scary. I'm not gonna lie. It was rated PG-13, but I was like closing my eyes during certain scenes, but I'm just a chicken. Anyways, I really want to read this because I like the movie and I've never read Agatha Christie before. <laughs> this is really me just like airing out all of my dirty laundry right now as a booktuber who has not read the classics. Anyways, 
that's that. A book that I DNF'd that's really popular. It's Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. I didn't like A Catcher in the Rye, and this one I was struggling with, but I might want to try again. I don't know. This is like a TBR of a mood reader who's unreliable. So it's a very short book to read. I started reading it and I just wasn't that into it in the moment. So maybe I'll pick it up again, I'm not sure. Now, when we think of fall, my brain automatically, like my 13 year old brain automatically goes to Twilight. Go to Forks, I hear a Decode by Paramore playing in the background on days like this when it's rainy and cloudy. And Bella and Edward's favorite book is Wuthering Heights <laughs> by Emily Bronte. And I started reading this when I read Twilight because I was like, I have to read Wuthering Heights. However, I don't remember anything from it. And I just feel like my brain wasn't absorbing everything. Actually, that's not true. I do remember the premise. Basically, I want to say the heroine. I think Catherine dies. One of them is dead. And their, their ghost is haunting the other. It's a romance story. Um, I wouldn't say romance, but it's one of the themes is like love even after death all of those things which clearly if we know twilight is a big theme as well because vampires are the living undead or something like that so anyway i want to read this this is literally the edition from when twilight was really popular and it says Bella and Edward's favorite book. How iconic is that? I feel like I should read it. Um, up next, let's stick with the classics. I do have like some contemporary fiction in here. Like, cause when I say I've changed, I have, but that doesn't mean I'm going cold turkey. The Sonnets and a Lover's Complaint by Shakespeare. I have read a lot of Shakespeare. Love Shakespeare. Love sonnets. I have been meaning to read this for a while. I just didn't get around to it in August during Seely Challenge. And yeah, we all know Shakespeare sonnets. There's one sonnet though where he's like literally roasting his love interest and he says that her hair looks like wires. And that sonnet just holds a special place in me and my best friend's hearts because we would literally use that sonnet to roast each other. <laughs> so anyway, I can't wait to read this. Virginia Woolf, A Room of One's Own. I've had this book literally since last year, or this like essay. I haven't read it yet, which is wild. So I want to get to that this fall for all these reasons. I also have not read Virginia Woolf. Like, I'm trying to read the icons. That's, that's what this is. Like, I want to read. I feel like I've done a decent job at reading modern classics recently. But in terms of like classics and then obviously like these are mostly um, British white women. I want to read classics from other groups of people like but these are like books that I have. I'm not trying to spend money. I'm trying to get through my physical TBR. Anyway, Virginia Woolf, Urban Wilbonzo, which actually goes hand in hand with Shakespeare because Virginia Woolf imagines what Shakespeare's success would be like had he been a woman. Or not her, but like a sister or relative to Shakespeare. Um, so yeah, I think that's fascinating. I would venture to guess that Anon, who wrote so many poems without signing them, was often a woman. Um, okay, so next we'll go into like some contemporary fiction and modern classics as well as poetry that I have. The first one being Beloved. Now, I know you're like, Ebony, this book has really been on your fall TBR for like a year now. I know, okay? I'm trying. But I actually haven't read Toni Morrison at all yet this year, and I read three or four of her novels last year, so I feel like I need to read Beloved. I heard it's a great fall read, staring unflinchingly into the abyss of slavery. This spellbinding novel transforms history into a story as powerful as Exodus and as intimate as a lullaby. See, its protagonist was born a slave and escaped to Ohio, but 18 years later, she is still not free. 
She has too many memories of Sweet Home, the beautiful farm where so many hideous things happen. Seed's new home is haunted by the ghost of her baby who died nameless and whose tombstone is engraved with a single word, Beloved. Filled with bitter poetry and suspense, as taunt as a rope, Beloved is a towering achievement by Nobel Prize laureate Toni Morrison. Um, I also want to get to Written on the Body by Jeanette Winterson. It wants a love story and a philosophical meditation, a distinctive mix of romanticism and irony, erudition and passion. Um, this is the narrator of Written on the Body, has neither name nor gender. The beloved is a married woman, and as Winterson chronicles their consuming affair, she compels us to see love stripped of cliches and categories as a phenomenon as visceral as blood and organs, bone and tissue, and as strange as an undiscovered continent. These sound so intense. If anyone has any lighthearted fall vibes, send them my way, because clearly I'm going to be distraught and sad. <laughs> I also really want to read Jasmine Ward's newest novel, Let Us Descend. It is coming out right here. It says on sale October 3rd. This is an arc that I received from the publishers. But this is also like a reimagining of slavery and African American um, experience from slavery up until now. That's my understanding. This doesn't really have a genre. There are many forms of exposition written in here. Um, there's prose, there's poetry, um, historical fiction, clearly. So I'm curious to see where this takes us. And basically the premise of this is let us descend the poet now began and enter this blind world, which is from Inferno by Dante. Another classic piece of work that I actually really have been wanting to read or has been like constantly in the back of my mind to read this year. So. Let's add that to the TBR as well. But yeah, so I think that would read and then also this, like that would be good to read together and like compare and contrast and see how Jasmine Ward uses Inferno to kind of reimagine or retell the African American experience. <laughs> I would also like to read Rouge by Mona Awad. I read All's Well um, by Mona Awad the end of last year into this year. I absolutely loved it. And Rouge is about beauty and there's like a haunting or like a spooky element to it as well. I don't want to say spooky, but yeah, it's all about beauty. I believe it's a Snow White retelling um, and it discusses like contemporary beauty standards and things of that nature and um, its effects on women. So I'm really excited for Rouge. It's actually one of like my most anticipated reads this year so I need that. I would also like to read Monstrilio and this is also inspired by Frankenstein so that's what I'm saying I want to read like these pivotal pieces of literature that are inspiring a lot of current works right now and obviously pop culture and, and films and everything um, so I would like to read that but basically I believe a child um, passes away and then his parents Frankenstein like build pieces of him I don't know it's a very weird read like I said I'm like into I want to be unsettled like I don't know that's just the vibe for me this fall also the vibe is beauty as well I want to read Zadie Smith's on beauty um this says just outside of Boston in a small college town of Wellington lives a family that is anything but typical liberated by education complicated by race and hobbled by self-delusion. Same. <laughs> they are about to stray onto the battleground that divides personal belief from political convention conviction. On beauty is A.D. Smith's brilliant, hilarious send up of the culture wars that define our age. I heard that this like takes place on a university setting, uh, which I love to read. And yeah, social political analysis. I've read Intimations by Zadie Smith. I've also read Zadie Smith's introduction to Toni Morrison's Recitative. And Zadie Smith is a, like, I don't need to say this. She's a brilliant writer, one of the best writers currently out right now. And I just love reading her analysis and her critiques on society. 
um, that's what intimations was about it was just about like our response to covid what it all meant um it was like a pandemic analysis and recidative was such an amazing like the introduction by her was so good it was probably one of my favorite parts about the book besides like Toni Morrison's writing you know I cannot wait to read this it's a thick book but we love this floppiness okay so quickly some poetry I mean I already mentioned Shakespeare but that was because I'm putting Shakespeare into the classic section life of the party by Olivia Gatwood um, I also need to finish let us believe in the beginning of the cold season by Fero Farakazad which I started in August for silly challenge I didn't get to this and I also want to read anodyne um, and this is by Khadija Queen these poems are considered the small moments that enrapture us alongside the daily threats of cataclysm formally dynamic and serially personal anodyne <laughs> asks us to recognize the echoes of history that litter the landscape of our bodies as we navigate a complex terrain of survival and longing love that and then coincidentally i have like the dictionary app on my phone and the word of the day was anodyne which just means a bomb or something that soothes pain so i was like wow and it was interesting i was like is that a sign for me to read this poetry collection this month yeah so i'm excited for this this is my very, very long and extensive fall TBR. Honestly, these are books that'll just be on my radar. I might not get to all of them, but I definitely intend to go through them. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here on this rainy September day. I look forward to seeing you and maybe I'll start like a series on my channel where I vlog my experiences reading these classics and then maybe at the end I'll rank all of them. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!